HTMX, you know the company with 600 plus CEOs, the absolute masters of trolling? Well, even if you don't know what the hell this is, you've probably seen this somewhere on your timeline. And to be honest, I thought it was a meme. I thought maybe someone was misspelling XML or HTML. Well, today we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna break this topic down and try to understand what this is. The first time I tried HTMX was about a year ago and it was quite interesting to say the least. They really take this idea of how we build dynamic web apps and how we go about the request response cycle and the type of data that we transfer and they really flip it on its head. And in a way it's like what was old is now new again, but in a new way. So after I first tried it, I didn't use it for a little bit up until about two months ago. I decided that my topic for the Commit Your Code conference that I was attending and speaking at was gonna be on HTMX. So I built out a single page application and demoed this in my talk. And now that it's fresh in my mind, I wanna share a little bit more about it. So let's kick things off by going straight to the source, the official HTMX documentation, which can be found at htmx.org. HTMX in a nutshell. HTMX is a library that allows you to access modern browser features directly in HTML rather than using JavaScript. In the introduction, it also says HTMX gives you access to AJAX, CSS transitions, web sockets, and server sent events directly in HTML using attributes. So what does all this mean? Well, for starters, it does not pin HTMX against JavaScript. It's actually quite the opposite. HTMX is a JavaScript library that simply extends the capabilities of HTML. So it's really a JavaScript library that allows you to write less JavaScript. So think of it in the same way that you would a front-end framework that's there to take away a lot of that boilerplate code that you have to write. HTMX is JavaScript code pre-written so you can access things in a different way. To give you an idea of how this works, I'm gonna jump to a part in my talk where I explain a basic HTMX request. Typical HTMX request looks like this. We have this button on this button right here with HTMX. We can add in this attribute here. We add in HX get. This sends a get request. And we're going to make the request to the data endpoint. Now on the request, we go ahead and hit the server. And from the server side, this is where things kind of change from what we're used to, where we typically expect a JSON response. We expect HTML back as content with HTMX. Now what happens is the default state with HTMX is to replace the target element or the trigger element, the element that triggered the request, in this case the button, with the content that was returned from the server. Now we don't want this div inside of a button, that doesn't really make sense. So we can add in the HX swap attribute and we can say, okay, go ahead and swap the outer HTML of this button. So when this button is clicked, the new UI element will now be the div that we see in that server response. Now, what if we want to maybe place an element somewhere else on the UI? This is very common. We click on one part and we want the DOM to update somewhere else. Well, with this response, we can set the target attribute with a CSS selector. And now this is gonna look for an item with the ID of container. And it's gonna swap the outer HTML of this container, making the response look like this. So that's the core idea. We're returning HTML instead of JSON objects and we're simply swapping data out here. Now, in the very next part of this talk, I show a comparison between two requests that are meant to do the exact same thing, one written with pure JavaScript and the other written with HTMX. So with JavaScript, we have a button with the ID of BTN. We go ahead and use a CSS selector. We get that button. We add an event listener to that button. Then we make a request. We get some JSON data back. We create an element. We create some inner elements. Then we add in the data to those elements. Finally, we append the inner element to the outer element. And then we simply swap it out in the DOM right here with replace with. Now with HTMX, we send the request, swap out the outer HTML on the server side. We return this string right here that will be converted into HTML on the client side. Now that's kind of ugly because if we're writing HTML on the server side like that, I don't want to be writing these strings right here in a Go server or any other backend. Well, we don't have to do that. We can simply return the template itself and then write our HTML where it belongs. Now, as you can tell from that clip, HTMX takes care of a lot of the groundwork for us that we would typically need to do in order to make an update like that by basically having all the JavaScript code we would normally need to write pre-written and available through HTML attributes. Now, of course, one of the reasons why that request can look so clean is because we're returning HTML data and most of the work is already done on the server side. 
Okay, so now let's jump back into the documentation and continue to pick things apart here. Starting with Ajax, we can now make an HTTP request from any HTML element. Remember, this is something that's only limited to anchor tags and forms, and we can only send a GET or a POST request depending on the element itself. Now with HTMX, we can now send a request from any element, and this can be a GET request, POST, PUT, patch, delete, and we can do this by simply specifying the HTTP verb. These requests can be triggered on most any event, so this includes an on-click event, mouse over, hover, key up, on change, and so on. Now at its core, HTMX is about sending AJAX requests, responding to events, and swapping DOM elements with new content. However, if you actually dive further into the docs, it's quite amazing how extensive the library is and how much control it really gives you. HTMX gives you full control over your request headers, so if you need to modify them, send some extra data, you can go ahead and do so. And what really surprised me was WebSocket support. Haven't tried this yet myself, but definitely going to do that. We also get access to an extensive event-driven system, so at any point, we can hook into these events and add in our own JavaScript if we want to modify some behavior. So at any point in the HTMX request cycle, we can add our own JavaScript code maybe before a request, after a request, before a swap, after a swap, and so on. There's plenty of events that we can listen to, tap into, and then just modify behavior. To tap into these events, you can add in a simple event listener with the HTMX helper method and specify the event you want to listen to. From here, you can write any custom code you want. If you want to know what's possible with HTMX and you're looking for some inspiration, they have this really cool example section in the docs here, and some of these really push the limit. So my favorite are lazy loading, stuff that you think would normally require a lot of JavaScript. Uh, I think that's really impressive that that's all done right here with HTMX. Uh, infinite scroll, also something that is normally quite a challenge to implement. The code example is right here. We're simply loading more content once it's revealed in the page. Uh, active search, this is definitely pretty neat. And then the last one that at least goes into my favorites is the progress bar. I think the fact that they're pushing this limit is really cool. I know that there's so much more you can do, but these are definitely some good examples to work with here just to kind of test out and just to see what's possible. So overall, here are my thoughts on HTMX. First of all, I love the direction we're going in. I like the fact that we kind of created a market for a tool we did not know we needed. Before this, it was either writing your own JavaScript code if you wanted something dynamic or committing to a front-end framework. And I think the developer that's going to benefit the most is that developer that maybe isn't in that JavaScript ecosystem, someone that wrote some back-end code with a framework, uses a templating engine, and now just wants something dynamic and they don't have to fully commit to a front-end framework and they don't have to write a bunch of JavaScript code that may be clunky because they're not good JavaScript developers. They now have a tool that they can just plug in and work with their system. I think it's going to benefit them a lot. I know I went through this when I was building a Django application with the Django templating engine. Once my project got too big and dynamic, I had to make that full switch. So I think a lot of developers are going to benefit from this. And overall, I think or I hope two things happen here. One, I hope we make HTMX better by having wider adoption, which means more eyes on it. We work out the bugs from it and it becomes a popular tool. Or two, what I think might happen is that this concept is gonna create this market and demand for it where we start seeing competition pop up. If we have competition, I'm personally the type of person that likes more tools to use because it means that we're iterating and we're making something better. So the more adoption we have, the more tools we're going to have. And I believe the better those tools are going to be. So overall, I think it's a step in the right direction.